Okay, so we do want to honor that uh, coffee break commitment that we made to all of the registrants and attendees. So uh, as more attendees uh, continue to trickle in, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, just to cover some logistics, the session will be recorded and the recording will be made available to all of the attendees shortly after the webinar closes. Uh, if you have any questions throughout today's session, please put those in the Q&A panel that's part of the Zoom interface. Uh, chat will be available uh, from uh, the panelists uh, for today's session to drop useful links, uh, but any questions that the attendees have for uh, myself or for uh, Gaurav, who is one of our solutions engineers, uh, needs to drop those in the Q&A panel, uh, and we will get to those after the session ends. So with the logistics out of the way, we can jump right in. This is the CData Coffee Break real-time reporting on NoSQL data featuring MongoDB, um, one of our ongoing Coffee Break sessions. Um, and so with that, we'll jump right in. For anybody that isn't familiar, uh, CData Software is the real-time data connectivity company. Our self-service data products and connectivity solutions provide universal access to live data from hundreds of popular on-premises and cloud applications, including MongoDB. Oh, there are millions of users around the world that are relying on CData to enable advanced analytics, boost cloud adoption, streamline their business operations, and generally create a more connected business. Uh, our connectivity solutions are consumable by any user, accessible within any application, and they're built for all enterprises. Uh, so with that, CData is redefining data-driven business uh, with our more than 300 employees, uh, over 9,000 customers, and over 100 uh, OBM partners. Uh, in today's session, we're going to be covering our CData connectors. So we have a variety of connectivity solutions. We'll talk about the CData drivers or connectors, depending on which flavor of technology you're using. Uh, and these are installable uh, software libraries that allow you uh, to get consolidated or ad hoc real-time data connectivity. Uh, we have a variety of drivers and adapters. These are going to be built to specific standards to provide a pure SQL interface for your data. Uh, from the tools and applications that you're already using. Uh, anybody that's worked with the database is going to be familiar with JDBC, ODBC, and ADO.net. But we also have technology-specific connectors uh, for platforms like Python and for applications like Power BI and Tableau. We will feature the Power BI connectors today. Uh, but in short, what we provide uh, is SQL access to all of your data uh, from the data consumers that you're using to any of the data sources that you have. Uh, again, in, in today's scenario, uh, we're simulating an organization that wants to be able to analyze their NoSQL MongoDB data uh, within their Power BI reports. So before we get into the demo, I think it's important to cover how CData uh, handles NoSQL data, how we provide the SQL to NoSQL connectivity. Uh, we'll do this in short. Uh, there'll be some more information available uh, via links um, for um, getting a deep dive into the SQL to NoSQL uh, solution. But uh, what we're going to look at today is a, a sample Airbnb listings in MongoDB. Uh, you can see here I have a sample JSON object. Uh, it has a variety of fields uh, with a variety of types. You can see the amenities field is actually an array. Uh, the address field is a JSON object within our JSON document. And what we do is we flatten that schema, uh, flatten that JSON object into a relational schema based on configurations that you make within your connection when you connect to your NoSQL source. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm flattening the arrays and I'm flattening the objects. So you can see that those top level fields, ID, listing URL, name, those all appear as you would expect. Uh, and then we either do intelligent typing or in some cases services will have a metadata uh, query that's available that allows us to get type information that way. Um, if there isn't a metadata query available within the API or the platform that we're connecting to, we'll actually drill down and, and scan a certain number of documents to try to intelligently determine the type of each field. In this case, we're reading that our ID column is an int, uh, our listing URL is a string, the name is a, is a string, and then we can drill down into the array and into the object to capture those fields as well. So the amenities field, uh, if I look at an amenities.0, that's going to be the first entry in this amenities array, and that's a string. We have the street field within the address object. That's also a string. And then we have the country code field within the address object. That's also a string. So we'll use this dot notation to drill down into uh, the different fields uh, that are available, the different values that are available within a JSON document. Um, so with that, uh, it's actually time to go ahead and jump into the demo. 
So I always like to start with the end in mind. So we're going to start with a pre-configured Power BI dashboard that's looking at this MongoDB data. Um, so you can see here, um, I've got the number of properties. I'm looking at uh, listings and reviews uh, from some sample Airbnb data. And I've got the number of properties by country and market. So we've got a variety of countries and then the markets within that country, United States is the only one that's really broken down. It looks like we're breaking things down by the Hawaiian islands. Uh, also we have New York city, uh, but other than that, we're now, uh, we're broken out there. And then we've got another stack bar chart that's looking at the number of properties by review score and market. So we can see that there are some number of properties in Hong Kong, uh, five properties in Hong Kong that have a review of two. Uh, if we drill down, we can see that there are three properties in Sydney that have a review of four, but most of our reviews, most of our properties have reviews in the nine or the 10 range. And we can see color coordinated um, markets within each of these stacks. But uh, where did this data come from? What does it really look like? Um, <clears throat> we can look at our MongoDB instance to get there. So um, I'm looking at our sample Airbnb, the listings and reviews, and you can see that we have this JSON document um, with all of those fields that we mentioned before, um, plus a lot more that I couldn't fit on the PowerPoint slide. And these are the fields that I'm drilling into. Um, so again, you could see that amenities was an array. We can see the values that are there. Address is an object with a street, a suburb, government area, market, country, and country code. So these are the values that I'm drilling into. So now that we know where the data came from and where we're gonna end up, we can actually drill into uh, how this was actually built. The first step is gonna to be to install the CData Power BI connector for uh, MongoDB. When you install it, uh, the first thing that's gonna pop up is the configuration wizard that's gonna allow you to connect to your MongoDB instance. Uh, so we can see here that I've got the server address and this is based on my cluster. Uh, because I'm connecting to MongoDB Atlas, I'm going to use the Scram SHA-1 auth scheme. So I enter just a username and password for my MongoDB Atlas instance. I pick out a sample database. Uh, each database is going to represent one of the collections uh, that's available within our instance. I'm going to use an auth database, and then I'm going to set use SSL to true. Uh, so once I do all of this, once I set all of my configuration properties, I can click test connection to ensure that the connection was configured properly. Uh, this is also available for on-prem MongoDB instances or other cloud-hosted MongoDB instances. So if you're hosting MongoDB in a cloud platform like Google or AWS or, or Azure, uh, you'll be able to access it as well. Um, so with the connection configured, we're ready to get to work. So we're going to quickly try to rebuild this. We're going to create a new Power BI report. Uh, let this load up, uh, which can take some time. Uh, thanks to all of the connectors that are available within Power BI. Um, but we'll drag over the new connector. Um, and then we can go get to work starting to access our data. So um, we're going to click Get Data. Uh, it's going to load up the library of available connections. Uh, and then I'm just going to search for CData MongoDB to use my CData MongoDB connector. I'll click connect. And then I'm just going to use the data source name. If you know that you have multiple MongoDB instances that you want to be able to access, you can create multiple of those DSNs, uh, those data source names uh, within the ODBC configuration wizard to get access to your data. And then one of the key selling points for our uh, C data Power BI connectors is the fact that we offer import and direct query mode. Import is great if you know you have a small data set and you just want to work with it in memory on the machine that you're building your Power BI report on. Uh, if you have a lot of data in your backend data source, the direct query option is going to provide better performance because you're not going to have to download, you know, hundreds of megabytes or even uh, up to a gigabyte of data, which is all that's available in import. So if you have large amounts of data beyond a gigabyte, um, you actually have to use direct query because Power BI won't let you import any more than that. So we'll click direct query. Uh, this is going to use that connection that I configured. Um, because I set all those configuration properties in my DSN, I can just use the anonymous um, authentication scheme. 
And what it's doing now is it's talking to MongoDB Atlas to get uh, access to that table. Um, so we hit that sample Airbnb connection. We have the listings, listings and reviews table, which represents that one specific collection within the database. And you can see here that it has drilled down um, and provided columns based on the data that's available there. So I'll click load. As I mentioned before, this is direct query. So when I click load here, what I'm actually loading is the metadata. So this is going to pull in the schema for my listings and reviews. And at this point, I will be able to start building out that visualization. Uh, in the interest of time, I may only build part of it um, just to give an idea of what's available, how we expose the data, uh, and so on. Um, so we can see our listings and reviews, and now it's drilled down. You can see the address object has been broken down into all of its subfields. Um, you can see the same for the host. Uh, when I first created this, I believe the amenities, I'm leaving it raw as an array. I can set that configuration to, to change, to flatten the array uh, as needed. Uh, but we can go ahead and go through. So I know that I want the uh, country. And so this is doing its Power BI thing. It is talking to MongoDB Atlas Live as we speak. Um, and it is requesting the country information from MongoDB Atlas. Um, so it should provide, you know, so we have a little map, um, the MongoDB uh, uh, location information doesn't always work exactly as expected. So if I flip this to a table, we'll see uh, all of those that are available. And then I can even grab the markets. Um, and so now we can see how the markets get drilled down. I see some blanks in here. I don't want that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a page level filter. Uh, and this is going to put this filter on top of every query that Power BI sends to MongoDB. So I want to grab everything but the blanks. Uh, and so this is going to update this. So it just spoke to MongoDB and said, give me everything except for all of those objects where address.market is blank. So you can see that that has changed. And then the last thing that we can do is grab the ID. Oh, I'm in the wrong area. Uh, I meant to be back on the visualization. Oh yeah, this thing. So let's get rid of this one. And we can grab the ID here and we will use this as our count. So, right, it's showing every, um, every ID for every, Listing. So now we have the count of ID. And it's at this point that I could flip this uh, into that stacked bar chart. We'll see how intelligent it gets. Yeah. So it looks exactly like what we had built before, um, just in a larger scale because uh, there's only the one graph. But we can see all of this information. So at this point, I could build out the rest of my charts and graphs, uh, you know, add to this dashboard. Um, and, and make it more robust, really analyze what's going on inside my MongoDB data um, and drill down from there. Uh, it, at this point, I do want to open the floor for any questions that our attendees have. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody has typed any in yet, which is fine. Uh, I can stall for a minute or two with some frequently asked questions to give uh, attendees a chance to, to ask. Um, so uh, one of the frequently asked questions that we get specifically for our MongoDB connectors is, can I connect to MongoDB on-premise and MongoDB Atlas? I mentioned this before, but yes, you can connect to both. Uh, and MongoDB, the installed version, can be hosted anywhere, um, wherever your organization needs it. Uh, we also commonly get asked questions about pricing. Um, licensing and pricing information is going to be made available at cdata.com slash driver slash MongoDB. Um, so you can drill down into the, any of the links that Garov dropped in the chat um, to get into there. But you can also reach out to sales at cdata.com to get more information uh, directly from a sales member. They'll be able to schedule a quick 15-minute discussion to dive more into your specific use case to help you figure out your specific licensing and pricing needs. Um, all right, so while we wait just a little bit longer for questions, I do want to drop to the next step slide, again, in the interest of honoring everyone's time. If you want to learn more about our MongoDB connectors in general, you can go to cdata.com slash drivers slash MongoDB. Uh, we offer free 30-day trials for all of our solutions. So if you'd like to download the Power BI connector for MongoDB or any other NoSQL store, you can go to cdata.com slash Power BI slash download. 
And then again, sales at cdata.com is the best point of contact for any of the questions that you have. We have business development representatives that sit on top of that inbox and that they will be able to answer your basic licensing and pricing questions and then triage any deeper licensing pricing questions or deeper technical questions uh, to the appropriate teams within CData to get you a response. Uh, you know, whether you need a support question answered, a technical question answered, or you have specific questions about your organization's needs. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions. So uh, with that, uh, I think we'll close out today's webinar. Um, so again, cdata.com slash driver slash MongoDB to learn more. Uh, thanks for attending and we will see you at the next webinar.